Today's notes, we're just going to review what we've done so far on days one through six. So we're going to start by applying what we learned in the beginning when the axis is symmetry, vertex, so on and so forth. So if we take a look at the first page, we have the height of a golf ball in feet, t seconds after it is hit into the air, is in the air is modeled by the function h of t equals negative 10t squared plus 60t. We will eventually graph it, okay? But we're going to use that more as our check. So there's the equation I would type into the calculator. But we know that this golf ball, okay, is on the ground to start. It gets hit, it comes up, it comes down. So if I want to find out how long, okay, that's our t or x, our time is here. How long does it take the golf ball to reach its highest point? Point. Again, that's the x value, which is the axis of symmetry. So we use the equation x equals negative b divided by 2a to solve for x, or in this case, our t value. So negative b, negative 60, divided by 2 times negative 10, gives us negative 60 over negative 20, which is 3. So our time is 3 seconds. What is that maximum height? So at that point of 3, what's the y value? So this is what I'm looking for now. How high would the ball go? So we're going to substitute x equals 3, or again t equals 3, into the equation to find y. So we've got negative 10 times 3 squared plus 60 times 3. So this is negative 90 plus 180 is 90 feet. So going back up here and in our picture, this question mark is now 90. Part C, how high is the golf ball after 1.5 seconds? That we're just going to substitute an x value of 1.5 or again t of 1.5 into the equation to find y again. So this is another point on the curve that's not the maximum point. Plus 60 times 1.5. And we get 67.5 feet. The last part, how long is the ball in the air before it will hit the ground? Going back up to the picture, it starts here, goes up, it ends here or hits the ground or lands. So this is what I'm looking for and that's a root. Okay? To find a root, we solve for x when your y is 0. So let's make note that it's a root or it's called a 0. So 0 equals negative 10 x squared plus 60 x. GCF of 10 and x. I'm also too going to factor out that negative x minus 6. So here's my factor with the root x equals 6. For this factor, set it equal to 0, divide by negative 10, and x is 0. This is when it hits the ground. This root here is when it actually is on the ground and the golfer is just about ready to hit it. So the answer here is 6 seconds. So if we take and sketch the picture, so our table of values, we know our vertex from part A and B is 390. So three points to the left would be 2, 1, 0. Three points to the right for x would be 4, 5, 6. So 0, 0 is when it's on the ground, 150, 280. So if I flip that, 80, 50, 0. So let's sketch those points. Here's 0, 0, 1, 50, 2, 80, the max, 390, and then 6, 0. So try to give it a, sketch a nice smooth curve. And you may be able to tell by your graph if you did a pretty good job. But to check part C at one and a half seconds right here, if you follow up, 
This is supposed to be about 67 and a half, which if this is 65, mine does look pretty close. So I did a pretty good job. On the next page, we're going to go over all the method, our methods that we use in order to solve for x. Finding a zero, okay, so factoring, quadratic formula, completing the square, and also state the nature of the roots. That just means to describe the type of roots that you have. So looking at the first one, the shortest method would be to take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to, don't forget the plus and minus, 8. These are real roots, they are rational. And I have two different ones, so they're unequal. I would also do the square root method to the equation on the right to get rid of the square. And I have x plus 3 equals plus or minus. Now, square root of negative 8 factors negative 4, 2. I'm going to subtract the 3 and then simplify it all in the same step. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus 2i radical 2. These are imaginary roots because of the i. Next row. Now, this one's nice because it's already factored. Don't multiply it to get the trinomial and factor again. Right from here, we have the roots of 13 and negative 21. These roots are real. There's no i. They are rational. And they're different, so unequal. The expression here, uh, I can't factor. The factors that multiply 81 and 18 are the same, 9 and 9. So my answers are negative 9, negative 9, but I don't write it twice. It's just x equals 9. So these roots, or this root, this is actually our double root, is real. 9 is rational, and they're equal. They're the same number, we just don't write it twice. The next one, because 14 is the double of 7, and the c is already moved the other side, I would complete the square. So that's the box method. As I mentioned, 14 is the square of 7, so 7 squared, the box would be 49. So factors x plus 7 squared equals 63. Undo the square with the square root, and x plus 7 is equal to, break it down, 9 times 7. Subtract the 7, oh, don't forget the plus and minus. So subtract the 7 from both sides, and x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 3 radical 7. And those roots are real, irrational this time, and unequal. And last, we could try to factor, but this is an expression that for you guys is a bit more challenging, so let's finish with the quadratic formula. So we have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we end up with negative of negative 7 is 7, plus or minus the square root of negative 11 all over 10. And we can't simplify 11, but I do need, or we need, to pull out the i for the negative radical. And then last is the discriminant. The discriminant is this number underneath the radical, and it tells us a lot about the type of roots that we're going to have. In terms of a picture, if I had to describe the discriminant in the roots of the functions below, the discriminant here, well, if the parabola doesn't um, intersect the x-axis, it has no real roots, and the roots are imaginary. That means the discriminant is negative, which is less than zero. Less than zero means negative. And the next one, it crosses once. That's actually your double root. Okay? And you have that only when your discriminant is equal to zero. And then last, when it crosses twice, you have two real roots, could be rational or irrational, but you have that when your discriminant is positive, which means greater than zero. I'll do this multiple choice question, or actually these two first, um, since they're on the screen. If your discriminant of a quadratic is 12, 
Well, the roots are only equal in the discriminant zero, so that's out. They're imaginary when the discriminant's negative. So I'm none of these two, and the only difference is rational and irrational. Remember, this is the number underneath, so negative b plus or minus the square root all over 2a. This is the number underneath the radical. And since I have to, since I can't take the square root and I have to break it down, I'll end up with a radical. It's irrational. Negative discriminant means imaginary. A zero discriminant means equal roots. So that's choice three. The one above it, we have to find the discriminant. So I want it set equal to zero first, and that wouldn't be a positive because when you move it to the other side, it becomes negative. And that's b squared minus 4ac. So b is negative 12 minus 4 times a, 4 times c, 9. So 144 minus 144, you have a discriminant of 0.